I wanted to, uh, you know, extend a little further besides just doing the flute. And um, there's this, uh, this fate called Russia. And it's um, part of our uh, Orange Springs tribes, our Yakima tribes, our Nespers tribes, our Umatilla tribes. And they have these um, buildings, longhouses, where we have our salmon feast, our huckleberry feast, our wood feast, our first foods feast. And so, you know, those um, first foods that we uh, had for uh, since the time of the memorial, um, my dad's 85 before, you know, his generation, uh, that's all we had was, was salmon and deer meat, elk meat, and uh, besides all the first foods, the roots, the piyaki, they call it, um, cows, they call it. And uh, so with those, uh, those foods, our allergies to live to, 130, and so um, I had, I had a uh, elderly. They called her Swan, and she was um, she had some daughters. They were uh, Atwa, Neti, uh, Sylvia, and Matilda. And when I was uh, still filling up diapers, uh, so to speak, um, five years old or three years old, I was named uh, uh, Walua, and that was my my name for uh, my Warren Springs Wasco, and that's first people. And so, um, so I don't remember any of the, the name givings that were, were done. And so, there, that, that was my, that's my father's side, and that's first, Warren Springs, Wasco, and the, uh, the people from the Columbia River that resided on both sides. And so, we have uh, Salado Falls, that was, you know, one of the wonders of the world that was flooded in March of 1957. And so, that was like, <clears throat> The Walmart of, uh, for 10,000 years of, was salmon trade. And it would be all like um, even people from Montana, South Dakota, bringing uh, deer, uh, buffalo, try buffalo to, uh, to uh, commerce with. And so that Salado Falls, uh, maybe one day they will uh, reopen it so that the, uh, the, gener the generations today could identify themselves with their, their native heritage that way. And uh, this one here, I have a song called Salado, Salado Cup, which means Salado Falls in the Itchiski, it's the Hakka language. And so on my CD Before America is the first song. But going back to uh, the Washa faith, the, the, the longhouse, I picked up this, this uh, part of my heritage um, a couple years ago, and so I wanted to, uh, this, is, this is this drum here, I bought this, this drum before even knowing any uh, songs, and so I'd like to uh, share a song and then, and then share some flute with you guys, but um, it's a short song, if, if you guys like to stand, you can stand, and, um, but it's, it's, it's going to be a healing song, and when I learn these songs, I want to know the interpretation of them. So I just so I want to know what I what I'm singing about, and uh, so I was informed it's a, it's a, a healing song, like some like someone's in their bed or you know in their deathbed or they're sick, um, and then it, it, this is one of those songs uh, for that. So here you go. Oh, oh, oh. 
life that's telling the Creator to uh, count me, count me, count me in. And I'm here today. So thank you. And then to conclude, I'm not sure if I need this to talk to you guys. Do I? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. This sounds cool. <laughs> I gotta use this though, because the sound guys, they did a lot of hard work to bring this out here. And I requested it, and I was hearing, uh, do they even have a PA for me? What's going on? Uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, this is the, uh, the flute that uh, my father got for me back in 1999. And so this native flute has uh, wolves on it. And some people think it's bears. But bears usually don't have pointed ears. And, uh, and, and, and the reason why I ended up getting with, uh, they call this a fetish on the flutes. And uh, go back to uh, how long I've been playing flutes, uh, 97, so 25 years. I never thought I'd say that. Um, but, uh, and I'm an impromptu performer, so I don't, I don't like rehearse a lot of like uh, songs. I do do songs like uh, Amazing Grace or the uh, tap song for the military honors that they do at the burials. Um, those are about the only two songs I really uh, try and keep uh, refreshed on. But other than that, it's all like just impromptu, so jazz, if you will. And uh, but that's not I say on the drum. That's that's rehearsed. You gotta. Um, that, that that was one of the songs that came to my mind, and you listen with your heart, and then you're able to express it. And uh, I'm just honored to uh, be able to pick up that drum because it's been it's been around for a long time. That singing, and uh, but uh, here's some uh, some of this uh, flute.
Slano Cup, Slano Falls. Thank you. Um, one of the big questions with playing flutes is, uh, do I make my, hitting my flutes? And uh, my first question is no. I always respond with, I make pretty good killing all day if I try making flutes. Um, I'd like to leave it up to professionals. There's a lot of non-natives making flutes. John Ely, the guy that made this one, has got a, a bear on it, like a pooping bear, like a bear. And a uh, total guy, sounds like James Bond when he talks, with that English accent. And uh, that, was, that was a gift. And so half of my flutes have been gifts, half of them I paid for. And uh, we have family that makes flutes. This is a Charles Little Leaf flute. He's, he likes to charge almost like $5,000 for some of his flutes with gold inlays in them. By then I'm thinking it better be one of those pianos that plays by itself. <laughs> if you're going to spend 5000 bucks for a flute, and you better be playing for like 25 years before you buy some kind of flute like that. But I'll never do it. Thank God. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, um, a drone flute that's... that's uh, been around for uh, since my time, uh, 99. And so um, some of this music that I, that I that's, that's taking care of me, these flutes that have taken care of me, um, before winning the Name American Music Awards, before becoming a nominee or even care about awards, um, it was more or less uh, a voice to express um, what kind of melodies I could have. And so I, I, was, uh, I was a student here back in 97, COCC and uh, never made honor roll, but I made honor roll the first quarter uh, ever in my life. I was like, oh, all right, good thing for like beginner classes. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, but uh, I would listen to this uh, flute music of my guy by the Mark Carlos Nankai to do my homework with. And couldn't do no homework with hip hop, couldn't do no homework with rock. And so native flute music was there, there, there was to come do my, uh, my uh, homework. And, uh, and I think that was like, uh, yeah, I picked up the flute a couple years later um, in, in 97, and then uh, just uh, ended up learning some of the tricks how to play flute and, and kept to it. And then three years into it, I was playing for the Smithsonian Museum of American Indian in Manhattan. And uh, that was just like early day networking. They paid for all the trips and guys packing my life luggage. I was like, whoa, wow, this is what rock star stuff feels like. Um, and uh, so that's that was really a boost and some uh, encouraging uh, memories to continue with uh, playing flutes. And uh, But <clears throat> I do make my own uh, bone whistles, but I didn't do the beadwork. This is a beadwork um, by my mother who was Hopi, and that's who, um, my father fell in love with back in the uh, early, late 60s or somewhere in their 70s. And uh, he said, I want to be with my cousin from Warren Springs, so I'm going to go to Arizona, Hopi Land, and, and find me a, a wife there. And um, so that's what my other heritage is Hopi. And uh, I also have a name for that, that tribe, which is uh, Tawanimtiwa. And there's also the, the last name to the Hopi is Nekwetiwa. And so, Tawanimtuwa means the sun goes home. So it's like the sun set. And uh, beautiful sunsets here in the uh, Cascades for sure. Excuse me. But uh, the Hopi ties with my, my mother, she passed in 2001. And she beaded this before I went to uh, New York to do a show, before I went to uh, the Indian Health Services headquarters in Maryland to do a show. And, but uh, I, I did the carving to come up with these, these uh, tones that come out of these, these bone whistles. And so they're a lot of high, more high, way higher pitch than, than these wooden flutes. And uh, so this one's a deer bone, and, uh, but she beaded it. And she always like, <clears throat> I always recall when she said, James, if you run out of money over there, just sell that. I'm like, what are you, what? <laughs> it's a fight to the death. 
uh, someone wants to take this from me. Uh, excuse me, no, that's not going to happen. Um, but uh, bless your heart. And then, uh, but then this one's an eagle bone whistle, and I got this from uh, my relatives, and so I did the carving on this. And uh, that's one of the, the first questions uh, about making the flutes. I'm like, so there's my answer. Making the flutes. You can't, you can't you can't go around killing eagles and making bolus for people either. So I guess I'm out on that. Um, but uh, and I brought my name back music award up here. Um, it just sits in my closet half the time. I don't have Hollywood calling me up. James Greeley, could you want a name American music award? Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I enjoy sharing again this uh, native flute with you. And uh, I'm going to do some bolus for you and do some more songs for you with some flute. And then so we'll go from there. This is your mom whistle from the Eagle Bone. I didn't finish up my story about my mother, um, how the Hopi ties come in with my flute music and uh, the channels that are um, uh, here to, uh, like a doorway that opens up or something, or um, Carcos Nakai calls it a canvas, a painting of a canvas, and you know, it's beginning and middle and it's end, or you know, your English class when you're writing these essays, got to have an intro, a body of inclusion, and um, it's kind of like the same same way I, I try to impromptu my music with the flutes here, and, uh, but but again, this guy, Kokopa, Kokopelli, um, he's on my business card, um, there's free business cards over there, there's the CDs over there, please take your business card, because um, you also can go to the um, uh, YouTube search, James Edwin Greeley, and there's videos, and the Before America CD on there as well. But um, but this music, uh, the history for me is, is is the Maya, the Incas, the Aztecs is where, where this derived from. And this Coco Pele guy, he, um, 3,000 years ago, he made it to the Four Corners area. And the Hopi people, they, they, they have these non-irrigated crops, um, corn, squash, melons, and they um, go through these, uh, intricate um, dances to, to pray for rain for their non-irrigated crops. And so there's like 50 of them. If you go to YouTube, search Hopi songs, Hopi dances, you'll see the eagle dancing, you'll see the, the kachinas that have been doing that for some 5,000 years. And so you got 5,000 years on the Hopi side, you got 10,000 years on the uh, Slava Falls side. And that's where I feel all my, my music comes from is, is those two settings of the, the water in the desert. Um, but again, with uh, Kokopa, um, again, welcomed with open arms by the Hopi people. Uh, he would play these songs, and he'd, he'd bring rain for their, uh, 
for their uh, corn squash melons, and it would take out so much time for them to uh, get all dressed up in their regalia. They're not costumes, we like to call them regalia. So don't, don't think that you're gonna go Halloween, okay, next year we're getting some native regalia from the ha Halloween costume store. Don't work that out. So, um, so get in their regalia, uh, all dressed up, and that's what they would do their, their rain dances for that. Um, but Kokopa, he would come, play his songs, and he also had some other magic that added fertility. So there was baby blooms going on at the same time uh, for the Hopi tribes. And so, um, again, the Four Corners is Colorado, Utah, Arizona, um, New Mexico, and they got all that Mesa Burger down, down there, Canyon de Shea, um, Canyon Lands, uh, Moab, uh, all those places. Uh, I feel connected with the Southwest in those areas, but Hope Villa, Arizona is, is the village that my mother was from. And this was one of the last villages that were, um, the, the, the government was trying to have assimilate into uh, mainstream culture. And when you get to Hope Villa, Arizona, there's a paved road that only goes so far into the village because those people did not want that way of life. They did not want to be part of the mainstream life. But in their prophecies, they, they, they have prophecies of, you know, um, spider webs all across Turtle Island, North America. They were talking about power lines. And uh, so they were making predictions before, uh, before everything is how it is now. And, uh, but, um, yeah, so that would have been quite a open name on my mother's side and my father's side, uh, Walula. And so that's why I'm like, James Evan Greeley, that doesn't even sound native. That sounds like some guy from Paris or something, I don't know. But there's Greeley, Montana. Um, there's, uh, I've been to Flanagan, South Dakota, and there's other Greeleys down there, uh, Sioux Indians with uh, last name Greeley. And uh, that totally tripped me out because I never thought that would, that would happen um, on my journey uh, to that area. But um, back to some more, uh, some flute with uh, some bass flute, and this is, uh, this is called a High Spirits Old Dog Board flute, and I uh, had this about 10 some years. Uh, I'm gonna do this other drum for you guys, people who really like this one. I've had this since 2002. But uh, they're the same maker, uh, High Spirits Flute, and this is the bass flute.
Now, some people like think playing flutes is hard. I think playing a recorder, hot cross buns was harder in grade school. And uh, it taught, I was self-taught in like three days at 20 minutes a day. Any longer than 20 minutes, I, my patience said no more for that day. Let's try again tomorrow. And, uh, but it's a primary scale, and you have a six-hole flute, they say to keep that one covered. And then, I guess if you advance yourself, you can start playing without that covered. Some people put buckskin over it, put, put tape over it, and then they, they learn this primary scale that goes like this. Day three at 20 minutes, I was like, I got it! <laughs> There's no one at War Springs to take tips from. But, uh, so yeah, after um, figuring that out, and there was uh, Librados. I don't know, 500? Just do some number, random number out there. Oh, really? How about if I fly up there and I'll pay you to teach me how to play flute? I'm like, really? <laughs> You're gonna fly from Texas? And uh, I, was, I was like, this is too good to be true. Um, and it was, and he told, called me like two weeks before he was supposed to fly out. So, oh, my kid got some stuff with his wife, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, don't worry about it, it's all good. I wasn't holding my breath anyways. But uh, that would have been interesting. We have been hanging out with a uh, guy who flew all the way from Texas for flute lessons. He said, I want to play like you, Mr. Greeley. I was like, oh, you can try. Give it a shot. I'm here. Pay me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, here's a, uh, another drone flute um, that people really like. And uh, this is, again, a whole Del board. And, uh, I'm going to do one side uh, by itself and then combine the two.
Thank you. Now, when, uh, before I got the double flutes, I had some time in my hands. I was, I must have said, oh, uh, you got that primary sky done pretty good. You got those little hair on your mouth things pretty, pretty slicked out. And, uh, and, uh, but, uh, before, before all that, um, I had two flutes that they, uh, two different makers. Um, this little tiny one with a buffalo on it, and then this one with a bird on it. And uh, one's in Keaton G, one's in Keaton C. These are my little cheater notes I have to use for when I'm uh, collaborating with other people. Try to go through each flute and see what keys they're in. And because uh, I don't read music, never, never play guitar, never play piano. I like a nice on piano, but uh, but um, yeah, no trumpets or anything to read sheet music. But uh, this one I used to call uh, two hearts is one, and uh, but this I, I figured this out about more or less I've been playing flute for 25 years, so right around playing flute for two years, somewhere around three years. But this is uh, two different flutes that uh, one flute maker said, "Oh, you found two flutes that made it." So are they gonna have babies? Um, I can use some free flutes. Uh, yeah, but uh, here's again the, uh, the two flutes uh, that key in with one another. Thank you. That one doesn't come with free flute lessons. That's like a thousand dollar thing I just came up with. Um, but yeah, that was uh, two flutes that uh, are going to have babies any day now. Uh, I did the Coca Belly part, uh, fertility time. And, uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, again these uh, flutes. Um, I'm just. Uh, Overwhelmed sometimes. Um, they just sit in my closet sometimes, like COVID. That was a bad thing for, for what I do. And um, there's a guy uh, named Hunter Jolak. We've been um, doing shows. He does this grand piano. He tows this grand piano everywhere. And, uh, 
Uh, we've done some collaborations for about three years now. We were on uh, CBS this morning, and uh, that was cool. Had drone shots and everything. And had me on there with uh, him doing his uh, piano at the called In a Landscape. And people were always getting at me like it was my In a Landscape. I'm like, I'm just a guest. And people were like, we want to hear more of you. We want to hear more of you with the piano. Not just five minutes, 10 minutes. We want to hear the whole show. One hour, flute, piano, piano, flute. I was like, yeah, we well, got to look at the, that guy over there, Hunter Nowak. And he's, I told him over and over again. And, uh, but, you know, still, uh, we're, we're here to participate and uh, here with COVID times. And uh, I hope, again, they're, the science, science is true that we're on the last leg of COVID. We're, that we're merging off the highway, as one reporter put it, uh, from COVID. Um, me and my father are both survivor of COVID. I don't know if anyone else here has had COVID or lived through it. Um, but we, we made it. And uh, I think, you know, by the grace of God, Jesus, Creator, Grandfather, Mother Earth, um, you name it. The, 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 that spiritual being, um, the most ultimate sovereign being in the universe, is another way I've heard it expressed from the Lakota Sioux. And, um, but uh, this is my first show after doing having COVID. And, uh, I was, I was contemplating if I was going to have enough air or breathing or, uh, you know, energy to do it. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And, and thank you again for being here. And uh, um, thank you for my father still being alive. He almost kicked the bucket last month from COVID. And uh, he said, uh, you know, just it's, when it, when it's not your time, it's not your time. And, uh, uh, but I didn't have any of the bad symptoms, like hard to breathe. I was, I, some guy on Facebook was, he gave me PTSD watching him go, trying to breathe around on Facebook. Dude, why you gotta put that on Facebook? I was ready to start getting a paper bag to breathe in, um, just watching him before I had COVID. And then sometimes wearing these masks, it's like, man, it feels like I got COVID trying to wear the mask. Can't breathe with a mask on. Um, going out your house. Uh, Wallet, my keys, my phone, oh, my mask. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to, you know, hopefully see the end of COVID. We get to, um, I, I still haven't gotten vaccinated. I got the um, antibody infusion after having COVID for two weeks and it helped, I believe. Some people were, you know, um, saying that that was a miracle for them, uh, whatever it takes uh, to uh, get out of that sickness of COVID. Uh, I guess I lost 30 pounds. Um, that was cool. I could have went for another week of sick to uh, lose another 30 pounds. But uh, I might have been dead at the same time. But, uh, so we didn't go that route. And, uh, but um, yeah, this, uh, this evening for Native American Heritage Month. Um, is the lady here that did the class on genocide? No? Um, yeah, uh, the, the lady, what was her first name? Gabrielle Hall of Klamath Falls, and she did a presentation on the genocide of, uh, from boarding schools. And I don't know if some of you have heard, that, you know, but her best, her best ratio for me was we're hearing more about the boarding schools in Canada in the past six months than we have in the past 60 years. And uh, you know, from those boarding schools in um, uh, Canada, um, Carlisle. You know, 7,000, up to 7,000 uh, children, five years old, didn't make it home. Gone, 10 years. And, uh, you know, my dad's generation before him, my dad, my dad was in a boarding school. And uh, one of the things he, he said, you know, these guys, these, these, these nuns, these preachers, they're, they're scolding us and they're cutting the hair off and they're telling us to uh, pray to someone with longer hair than us. What's going on here? And uh, so, you know, those, those uh, not to make a mockery out of it, but um, the United States is still not, you know, stepped up to, uh, like Canada has, 
to recognize it, to apologize, and to have to to have this modern technology go into these boarding schools and having this radar come up with seven thousand kids that lost their lives and didn't make it home, and and parents, grandfathers, grandmothers, not ever hearing from their their children ever again, just repulsive. And uh, but um, that's just. Uh, you know, some of the United States still has to own up too, because there's still Chamala Indian boarding school. It's the longest boarding school in Salem, and they have unmarked graves there too. And there was a, a story shared where there was a young boy who uh, broke into a store, and he was like six years old, and the, and the store owner shot him for being in the store. Why you need to shoot a six-year-old, an unarmed six-year-old? Doesn't make any sense. And uh, so. You know those those times. Uh, we're still we're still here. You know we're still with the, the genocide. Some reservations are a lot different from one reservation to the other. They're like the coastal tribes. Those guys are rich, you know, money all day long. But those those all decide on geographical. Um, if they're in the middle of nowhere, if they're connected to a metropolitan area, that they're doing, they're having to have success. For us in the middle of nowhere, because it's going to be a different story. We still have poverty. We still have had drug use, just about crimes that are not good to speak of. And, uh, but, uh, you know, the American Heritage Month, I think Bill Clinton was the guy that signed it in, uh, as far as I knew, but uh, don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I started the American Heritage Month back in 1999 with uh, the Indian Health Services in Maryland. They, they again, paid trips, 99, 2000, just beginning flutes, and uh, I thought that was that was that was, that was a, group, a really good thing. Um, I was on this, this new journey with uh, native flutes, but um, I'm going to share. Uh, I think we're, I'm not sure what time we're at. I don't really care about hours. Uh, six minutes, um, plenty of time. But uh, again, I got CDs back there. I'm doing two for one, so they're uh, twenty. You get my. CD that I won the Native American Music Award for. The, the, the Nannies is like the Grammys for the Natives. And uh, so Before America um, and the Honor of Supernatural CD is what I did in 07. And that was a multi nominee. It came with a DVD. But if you go to Chamber uh, Really or Honor of Supernatural on YouTube, uh, you'll see some of the, the, the clips that I did back in 07. And uh, I was trying to do uh, like the Hunter Nowak thing with music in the wild when I was doing Native flutes in the wild. And so I was all over the reservation in Warm Springs here with Mount Lakes, the, the Mount Jefferson at the base. Um, that's all on YouTube. And then uh, the CDs are set with like the effects that um, is going on here today on the CD, um, making it more of a, a timeless sound. I think I've gotten spoiled with it um, versus just the dry mic. And, uh, but I remember going to like, Parking garages to get the, the reverb going off the uh, concrete walls. I'm like, whoa, this is way different. I could stay here all day. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to share the uh, um, last two songs. And uh, one's for the veterans, and then one's for uh, the children that didn't make it home, and the ones that are still to be identified here in the United States.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our veterans and for those children that did not make it home. Um, James was referring to an event we had um, last week in here and then earlier in the week in Madras. And Oigan from CSCC filmed and so that will be on our website. Um, Gabriel Hall did a really moving presentation about the boarding schools and um, just the horrific things that happened there and the number of children that didn't come home. Um, and we're also recording James's performance tonight. So we're gonna give Oigan time to work his magic and those will be on the Native American website. So you can just go on to cocc.com and uh, just type in Native American program into the search bar and that will come up. And I am so embarrassed I didn't mention your name. <laughs> that was terrible. Yes, um, give it up again. 2017 winner, Native American Grammy Award for Best Traditional Recording. So again, thank you very much. Um, Dre, thank you. Dre's one of our students here. He's working the CD table back there, so if you still want to purchase CDs. And there are some wooden boxes out, and I'm not good at this, but um, those are for donations for our First Nations scholarship. And um, I have to remind myself I'm not asking for me. This is for our Native students. And um, so any amount you could give would be great. Take a bottle of water with you. and. Safe travels. Thank you.